Automatic payments, reoccurring and subscription payments are important to set up if you offer reoccurring services or products to your customers. This reduces the time friction of creating separate invoices for your customers and for each separate billing cycle. This is where Stripe comes in and allows you to simply set up these reoccurring payments so that you can essentially streamline your payment processes. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome back to this channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today, I'm excited to share how you can simply set up reoccurring payments and subscription plans in Stripe so that you can simply collect automatic payments from your customers. Okay, so before we go ahead and dive into this brief Stripe tutorial, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that quick note out the way, let's go ahead and set up reoccurring payments and subscription plans for your customers in Stripe. <music> Okay, so here we are inside one of our Stripe accounts. Now, if it's your first time using Stripe, you're completely new to actually understanding how Stripe works, then what I'll do is link a beginner's tutorial up above and down below in the description that will guide you through a complete Stripe tutorial that will help you set up and navigate all the impressive features that Stripe has to offer. So go ahead and check that out if you're completely new to Stripe. Okay, so to go ahead and set up automatic payments, recurring and subscription plans, we need to navigate over to products in our menu. And as you can see within products, we have one product item that has a one-off payment plan associated with this product. However, what we want to do is create a reoccurring payment plan. And we do that by creating a reoccurring plan within a product. So to do that, simply navigate over to add product. And down here, the first thing that we want to do is add the name of our reoccurring product or our subscription plan. Now, maybe you're selling a reoccurring product that you ship every week, every month. Now, this obviously depends on your shipping cycle. However, think about the product or service that you offer. An example for me could be a yearly consulting package. So I'm going to go ahead and add the name of our subscription consulting plan. And as you can see, I've added yearly platinum consulting. This is $399 per month. Then we also have the option to add a product or service image that's associated with the subscription plan. You also have the option to add a description. We're going to leave that for now. You have additional settings. These are optional. We're going to leave those. And under pricing details, what we want to do is select a pricing model. We're going to keep standard pricing. However, if you want to learn more about all these other options down here, you can simply click this more information and navigate through all the different options. We're going to keep standard pricing, then come down to price. Now this is the price that's charged during every billing period. So I'm going to add $399. You can also select your currency over here. Now again, we have the option to add one-time payment or reoccurring. Today, we're going to focus on reoccurring payments. Then down under billing period, what we want to do is choose the billing cycle, the billing period. Do we want our customers to be charged $399 daily, weekly, monthly, every three months, every six months, yearly, or do we want to create a custom reoccurring billing cycle? We're going to go ahead and keep monthly selected because if we navigate up to the top, this is yearly platinum consulting and that's $399 per month. So if we navigate back down, we can also come down and select usage is metered. We never use this option because our reoccurring pricing stays the same. Then if we navigate down to additional options, we can go ahead and add a price description. This is only for internal purposes. And for this product, if it had additional pricing plans, we can go ahead and add those pricing plans to this particular product. This product or subscription plan only has one price. So we're going to leave it at that and navigate up to save product. Now, what we can also do is navigate down to create payment link if we click here. And this is where we have the option to create a payment link for each of our different products. So we've just created a yearly platinum consulting subscription plan. We can go ahead and create a link which allows us to send the payment page to our customers and they can directly sign up through this page to our consulting plan. 
and we also have the option to add additional products to this payment page to this link now you also want to navigate over to confirmation page and choose if you want to replace the default custom message down here you can also choose to don't show confirmation page and once your customer has successfully signed up they will be redirected directly to a different website page that you choose so what i'm going to do is go ahead and create link and then if we navigate down here, this is the link that we can copy and then send to our potential customers where they can directly sign up to our subscription plan. However, for this particular product, this particular subscription plan, I wouldn't use this payment page and send that to customers because I don't have an end date for this plan. And basically, this is only a 12 month plan. So what we can also do is navigate over to customers. And let's say that you have a customer that you want to assign this subscription plan to. What you can do is simply click on the customer, then navigate down the page and locate subscriptions and click create. Choose your subscription plan that you created and then navigate down to subscription schedule. We can choose the start and end date down here. So for example, this is the start date. What I can do is click here and change the start date or I can navigate over to forever and come down and click 12 cycles. So remember, this is a 12 month payment plan subscription plan. So there are only 12 cycles. And again, you can change the start date if you like. However, if you're providing consulting every month and there's no particular end date, then you do not have to use the end date and you can use the payment link to send it to your customers, potential customers that they can use to sign up. So remember, you have the option to add an end date for each customer or that subscription plan can continue forever until you or the customer cancels that plan. Then what we want to do is navigate down the page to payment method. We can automatically charge a payment method on file. Now, this particular customer does not have a payment method on file. So what I would do is make sure this is selected. Email invoice to the customer to pay manually. And then down here, we have the option to include the invoice payment page. This is the payment link that we created earlier. We can also manage payment methods down here. We also want to add a memo and then down here, advanced options. If you like, you can come down and add an invoice footer. This could be terms and conditions related to this service. So what I'm going to do is navigate up to the top and go ahead and click start subscription. And as you can see, we've assigned this subscription plan to this customer. Now, what we can also do is click on the subscription and we can navigate over to actions and we can update the subscription. We can pause payment collection, not cancel the subscription. So basically there is an end date here. We can select don't cancel. Then we can also reschedule the cancellation or we can simply go ahead and cancel for now. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel now and then click cancel subscription. We can also choose to add a refund and then I'm gonna click cancel subscription. Now, if I navigate back over to customers and then click on Emma, what I can also do is navigate up to actions and come down and create an invoice. Now with the invoice, what we can also do is add an item. This could be the yearly platinum consulting, the subscription plan that we created. Then I could go save and or add additional items if I like. Then if I navigate down, I can again choose email invoice to customer with link to payment page. So that's gonna send the invoice as well as the payment link that we created earlier for this customer to make the payment and join this subscription plan. We can also change the payment options down here and then we can add the due date. Okay, so what I'm going to do is exit out of the invoice and then navigate over to payments and then under payments is where we can find all our subscriptions over on the left hand side. And at the moment down here, because we removed our first subscription from our customer, what we can do is create a new subscription here, simply add the customer and then either create a new product or choose your subscription plan that we created earlier. We can then come down and add a start date and an end date if we like. We can also change the start date of the billing cycle. And then if we navigate down further, we have these two options again for the payment method. And then we have memo and basically the same information that I've showed you when adding a subscription to a customer or creating an invoice. Then all you would do is click start subscription. And as you can see, the customer is missing a chargeable source. That's because if we come down here, the customer does not have a payment method on file. So what I would do is click down here 
email invoice to the customer to pay manually. And again, like I mentioned before, we would add the invoice payment page that we created so the customer can make that payment online. Then all I would do is go ahead and click start subscription. And again, under subscriptions, this is where you will find all your current subscriptions as well as scheduled and canceled. And we can also navigate over to payment links to find our payment links if we want to use this payment link to send to potential customers to sign up to our reoccurring payment, our subscription plan. However, that is everything I wanted to cover in this Stripe tutorial sharing how you can simply create reoccurring payments for your customers. And there we have it guys, that is it for this brief Stripe tutorial helping you set up reoccurring payments for your customers. Now if you have any questions about this tutorial make sure to pop them down below and with that said thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel and that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care guys.